Hello everybody and today we are here to another board game review. Today we will be reviewing Unlock Exotic Adventures. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we will be telling you that why you should play Unlock Exotic Adventures. In Unlock Exotic Adventures, as the name may hint, you will be going on some exotic adventures through the lands of the 1001 Arabian Nights, uh, through a horror story, a boogeyman story, and a Jurassic Park-like adventure. You said that in the wrong order. Doesn't matter. Depends on which order you play in. But those are the three adventures that await you in this box. These adventures are available as separate small boxes or uh, the more common distribution model is three games in a bigger box. And that's what I'm showing you here. And I'll be telling you that how these three games feel because these are one and done play games. Uh, you don't destroy any components, you just play them and once you have solved the puzzles, you nearly know how the game works out. So uh, I get, that's why we cannot spoil much of it. So Isha, how does Unlock Game generally work? An Unlock Game, uh, uh, the Unlock Game actually runs on the Internet app. Basically, all you have to do is download the app and you're already done with getting half of the game. On these cards, there will be red cards, blue cards, green cards, which also which are also known as machine cards, and multiple others. So there will be red cards like this, as well as some blue cards like this. And what happens if you combine them? Well, they turn into one object. On how to do that, you simply add the numbers shown on both cards to get the other number. So once you have a successful combination, they might reveal a card number, the numbers add up, and they reveal the resulting card, which might be the correct one. So that's one way to solve the problems. The other would be the green cards. What are these? These are machine cards. This is where the app actually comes into play, as you need the app to go into these machines. In the app, you'll be required to do some sort of function, such as perhaps moving cables around, switching places of items. Again, yeah, and not spoiling anything. The main fun of actually unlock puzzles or where they add interactivity outside of these cards is actually using the app. Because they have found various ways of using the app or the functionality in the smartphones these days in various means. Uh, so sometimes you might be using your drag and drop feature. Sometimes you may be using your voice to find things. And uh, again, they might find really innovative ways on how to use your accelerometer or other features of your phone to solve these kind of puzzles. That's why the machine puzzles are one of the most innovative ones that you will find in Unlock. A less innovative puzzle that you will get to solve in Unlock are the yellow cards, which are? The code cards. All you have to do is go into the app and press the code button and enter a four digit code. Correct. So uh, you might have to solve a physical puzzle, a puzzle on a different card, reference multiple cards, to find out a logical sequence of four digit code and then you enter that four digit code which is normally a numeric code uh, in the app and that will unlock the door or anything that's going to be there. Then there are going to be some gray cards which are normally going to show you the location that you are in, uh, the physical location or just an information about an object you cannot interact that object with other objects. So it's those are the different there kind of cards that you're going to find in unlock puzzles but using these components you will be actually uh, trying to mix these up and trying to uh, solve different kind of puzzles now that you have understood how the unlock puzzles work let's go into quickly the three puzzles that do come into the game and as i said before that these are uh, we cannot reveal about the nature of these but what we can tell you is that what the theme or story was and what did we feel about the mission. 
So the easiest one that you are going to play in this one was the Knight of the Boogeyman. So Ishal, what was it about and what did you think about this one? I'm going to tell as far as I can remember. Basically, the Knight of the Boogeyman is about you being a parent or a guardian trying to protect a young boy from the monsters. The, in, you know, the classical, there's monsters in the darkness and you have to protect the child from them. And it turns out there actually are monsters in the darkness. So, what did you think of the puzzles and your rating of these puzzles? Some were quite creative, but they were also quite easy, so... Honestly, I feel kind of neutral about them. They're pretty forgetful. Okay, so my main interest about this story was the different boogie creatures that are there in the night. Because each creature is going to add a different kind of challenge in the game. So for example, when the spider comes out, it is going to add a different level of difficulty on you uh, and you are unable to do different kind of things. When a different monster comes, maybe the people are unable to speak to each other to solve the crime. Uh, when one of the monsters, the darkness monster comes, and then you can, you can two cars at, at a time and you have to flip all of them face down. So you need to be more optimized in what cards you see and try to solve the puzzles in that way until you beat that specific monster. So that was a unique way in solving the monster puzzles. Plus it does come with a piece of paper which you are going to use as an origami puzzle as well. And that what made it unique otherwise the puzzles were easy so if you are coming in to unlock this one is a good one to start with and it will present you with a reasonable challenge that you and your family is going to enjoy the artwork was nice as well on these ones Pretty cartoony. yeah it's so terrifying <laughs> yeah so as you can see here so these are a child being scared with the um, nightmares. That's what the cartoon drawing But anyway, that's what the night of the boogeyman is going to be. Oh. All right. Now, the next one that you're going to play is the Shahrazad's Last Tale. That was very hard to pronounce. Shahrazad's Last Tale is set in the 1001 Arabian Tales universe. So, the famous tale of the princess. Uh, being wed to a cruel king who is going to kill the princess or his wife at the end of the night. And what the wife then actually starts doing is princess. Start, princess starts telling is starts telling a tale to the king and by that tale she never finishes that tale. So what happens is that the king is always leaves her alive. So and she's thinking. very anxious into actually telling her, uh, letting her live because he wants to know what happens the next day in the like story. All stories. And she keeps telling stories after stories after story. That's a very famous 1001 Arabian Tales overarching uh, story in which there are many tales which you must have heard about. Sinbad, Aladdin and many other tales actually come from this uh, 1001 Arabian Tales. Now, what this one does is let you play one of the last chapters from that story that the princess had written that last piece of the story and she lost it or somebody stole it. Well, basically, the scribe has written it. However, the scribe did not come to the princess's place at the appointed time. And so you, as a prisoner of the palace, seek to help the princess in finding the scribe. Yeah, and get her the story in time so that she doesn't get executed and she can tell the story to the king. And maybe get you out of jail. <laughs> yeah, and that's how you're going to help. So Ishaan, what did you think about this game and the puzzles in this one? Honestly, it's quite nice. Um, the artwork is very nice. The puzzles were actually quite memorable, some of them. But you should really see the ending. The ending is really what you should focus on because it has quite the end. Yeah, so this one was my favorite of the whole Stop bunch as well. Cards. Well, I'm just showing some of the artwork, not revealing anything. From far away, they cannot read the text, but uh, we need to keep them in the sequence. 
So the artwork is oriental as expected. Uh, it, the different. puzzles were really nice and of course as I said that this one was my favorite of the three from this box. The story, the theme and the puzzles all were very coherent. Uh, especially the most memorable moment of this game was one of the app puzzles in this one uh, which is related to the story of Alibaba. I will not say anything other than that. But uh, once you play that, you will recognize that. And uh, so there were many twists in this one. The ending has a twist as well. There can be two different kind of endings or two branching ways in which you reach the same ending. And that was a nice way into seeing things or different things can be played out. So it's not on the real story. You can actually have a slightly worse ending than a slightly better ending but anyway uh this one was shahrazad's last like year well it doesn't matter the ending is the same it's only how it branches out you might get slightly better way on reaching that one or the good way on reaching that one now coming to expedition challenger now expedition challenger is the one which is prominently shown in the center of the box, which is Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, the escape game where a group of um, scientists, explorers have gone back and to an uninhabited. Well, it's not uninhabited, but well, like an the island, sacred island sacred? No, it's an island where island dinosaurs still exist, but also do some of the other tribes as well. But what you find out is uh, by the time actually that you go back to find these people who have gone on that expedition because they have gone missing and you have to find them. The good twist in this one was that there is a timer now going in the game. Even though you are playing with cards, but the timer is actually managed by the app that how many cards you explore. So the cards lay out a map in front of you and how many it cards you explore cool. yeah how many cards you explore that acts as a timer and if you spend too much time exploring and not helping the people they might actually die as well because they because are in dire situations every day, they sort of show a health record with their health bars and each day you don't help them it decreases yeah and you need to find and help them out and let me just tell you you need to be quick during this very quick so very few things are written on the survival guide including some information about the dinosaurs some puzzles a map uh, which is going to help you on this expedition now the puzzles in this one as i said the interactive thing about this one was how the map was laid out uh, the artwork is going to be more realistic in nature on in this one uh, to depict the theme of that Jurassic world or uninhabited island on which you are going. Uh, plus the puzzles have some kind of uh, unique nature as well. Some puzzles will be limited to, so for example, if you find a big giant rock, you will not be able to just pick it up and put it in your pocket and use it anywhere. There might be an anchor symbol on the card. So there are some new symbologies on the card as well, which will tell you that, okay, this item is a usable item, but only when you are in a specific location in the map. Now, those kind of restrictions force you to actually move around in the map to go and collect things. So if you want really water, no such thing as just camping. Yeah. If you want water, you need to go to a lake and collect water from there. You cannot just say, okay, I have a bunch of cards. Okay, I take water. That's not going to happen. You have to physically move to that place before you can use I mean, two different items. How can you conjure water out of thin air? So that was the unique twist of this game. But when it comes to the puzzles in this one, some of the puzzles, especially towards the end of the game, were really, really hard. That's what I felt. Yeah. And we end up not doing very good in those. We ended up like losing a lot of people. A lot of people died. <laughs> yeah. We lost a lot of people and even after we lost, we still couldn't figure out that 
how do how were we actually supposed to save them so once the whole game was done we actually looked through the cards and then we understood oh we needed to do this but this didn't make sense but anyway we needed to do this to be able to do that to be able to do this then we had to go there so you need to go in a very specific sequence of things and multiple puzzles or at least uh, two pairs of puzzles were there which were similar to each other and you could confuse about the using the solution of one to solve one of the puzzles and that's where we spend most of our time trying to figure out that how does this round hole pack fit into an oval hole because they looked similar so that's why those puzzles were like kind of similar trying, it's like trying to put a triangle in there it's like trying to put a triangle in a circle hole you understand no you but mean? but but these were very similar so it's like fitting an isosceles triangle in an equilateral triangle hole. yeah something so, like that so it was very similar. So the puzzles were similar and you were trying to fill them. And that's why actually it, we spent more time and then we were frustrated. Oh no, we were supposed to use X hint to solve the Y puzzle and not the other way around. Anyway, that's why that's actually nice. it did uh, leave a, a little bit of sore taste in our mouth because in the end, what you do want is for you to feel good about yourself that's what the escape room games should be able to do and if you end up having uh, a bad experience out of the game you feel bad you feel dumb or you feel, you, like feel you failed everything yeah or you end up just like what i'm saying that maybe the puzzle was not clear you end up blaming the game of not being clear and that just tells me that well the game actually failed in doing that the game could have been more clear about it and that's why this one was uh, the least, it started as really good, very innovative ideas, but ended up being my least favorite of the bunch Same. that we played just because of those last few puzzles, because we didn't feel like we did it. We just went through it and uh, lost a bunch of people. I remember there was a specific puzzle I won't describe too much, but it's relating to one of the men being stuck somewhere. And we were stuck for hours. Like, he was... We had a specific item, alright? It was like, uh, you know? You know? A horn? Yes. I'm, I'm trying not to say it to the viewers, but whatever. <laughs> we tried, like, calling him out using that, but it wasn't working. And then we just gave up. Yeah. So anyway, these are the three puzzles in this one. My favorite one would be Shahrazad's Last Tale, then the Night of the Boogeyman, and then the Expedition Challenger. I'll say the same thing. Uh, is it worth buying? Sure. Yes. If you're a diehard Unlock fan like me, then all the Unlock games are good. Yeah. You're still going to enjoy them. There are still unique puzzles in this one. There are still unique innovative things that you're going to experience in this one. So you are still going to have a fun time with this box as well. But if you are new to the unlock world or you seldom buy escape room games, then I will say that there are far better unlock boxes, game boxes out there that you can purchase. Uh, and instead of buying this one, get one of those which has all three better games in them. Uh, yeah. Like the Unlock Mythic Adventures, one of the recent ones, had all three fantastic adventures. Get one Was of those. The one with like the Achilles thing? Yes. Or Unlock Escape Adventures, that one was also a very good box. So get either of those two boxes as compared to this one. But if you're a diehard escape room fanatic like us and just want more content, then this one still is going to have enough good puzzles for you. That's it from us. And happy gaming. Happy gaming. He's coming. Okay.